Hi everybody, and uh, welcome to our AP Laser Workshop. Uh, so I got some fun stuff for you guys today. Uh, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be etching a portrait and a background scene on a dog bone. Uh, I'll kind of take you over to our machine here and show you what we're working with. Um, so this is what we have here, just a little bit heavier and bulkier than I uh, can actually fit at the table here. Um, so I've already gone through and measured out a little bit uh, to kind of find my center and we'll dive into that a little bit here in a second. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump over to our programs here. And so what we're gonna be doing again is we're gonna be putting this image here Um, on the bone with an actual background scene, which is right here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and open up my Corel Photo Paint. I'm going to start a new document here. I'm go ahead and name this Dog Bone. I'm gonna be using a black background color because we are putting this on granite and I'm going to go ahead and input in my sizes here. Now my bone is actually 16 by 8 inches and I, I do want to make this just my working area just a tad bit bigger uh, just to make sure because we are doing a full scene that I'm not going to leave any blank or empty spots on there. I'm not going to increase it by a lot only about an eighth, eighth inch which will give me about a 16th inch on each side. So we'll do 16 0.125 by 8.125. All right. So here's our background here. I'm going to click on my objects tab. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my template. Uh, this dog bone template is available for download on our AP Laser University site. is there and it is in an AI format so it should work with any version of Corel that's all the way up here so I'm gonna bring this down here now this has got this white kind of background around it because it was an AI file so what I'm going to do, I'm going to just real quickly get rid of that so I'm left with just the bone shape here. To do that, I'm going to go over to my left-hand side toolbar. I'm going to grab my masking tool. And what I'm actually going to select is my magic wand masking tool. So this is a nice nifty tool where I can just click in this area here and then hit delete. Just like so. All right, so there's my background there. Get rid of that one. There we go. Grab my pick tool. And then I'm gonna use my align and distribute tab over here on the right hand side to make sure that I'm centered in on this page. Right, I'm going to go ahead and increase my size here. So I'm going to lock my ratio and I'm going to make my bone 16.125 uh, I'll use my line and distribute again just to center in there. So basically I'm just kind of using this as a guide so I know where to keep my image at. So I'm going to go back to my object layers here. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off my background color. I'm going to name my object one, just bone. And now I'm going to go ahead and import in my image. I'm going to go up to file and import. And my image is just a little bit bigger than my working area, so I'm going to come to the corner and just drag this down a little bit. I'm not going to be too concerned where it's setting at within the bone for right now. 
what we're going to do is go through and actually do an isolation and then a mask around this. So I'm going to go ahead and double click this. I'm going to name my photo original or OG. I'm then going to go ahead and hit control D to duplicate that. Again, just, just in case uh, I don't like what happens over here on this new layer I made, I can always delete that. And then I still have my original photo here. Go ahead and call this one our cutout or just the CO. And so with my cutout layer here selected, I'm going to come up to image and then cutout lab. My personal preference is I just kind of do a, a basic trace around here. I don't worry about getting too close as I'm going to clean this up after I'm done. When you come down to a bottom of a photo like this one here where it's flat on the bottom, you want to make sure that you're still coming down and around. We want to make sure that this outline here is fully connected. So after I've done that, I'm going to come here to my fill tool and then just fill in the areas I want to keep. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Next, I'm going to grab my eraser tool over here on the left hand side. And I'm going to adjust my nib up at the top left hand. Uh, my personal preference is I really like this round shadowed one. Uh, that is, again, my personal preference. So I've got that selected. And I'm going to come in and just start cleaning up my edges. A real quick, easy way to adjust this nib size here is by holding your shift key and your left mouse key and then just rolling your mouse frontwards or backwards. So I'm going to just make this a little bit larger just to get most of this on the outside. Like always, I'm using my object marquee here, which kind of shows me little areas that may, I may have missed that still needs to be cleaned up. I like these fragments back here. If you don't know where your object marquee is, it's right up here at the top, and it's this button right here. Clean this up just a little bit more here. Just like that. I'm then going to go ahead and grab my pick tool over here on the left hand side. I'm just going to kind of minimize this a little bit just to make sure that I'm fitting with inside my dog bone. Uh, the next, because I have a flat bottom here and I really kind of want to offset these guys over here on the right, I don't really want this solid line coming across. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to grab my masking tool over the left hand side toolbar. Which we still have our magic to one selected. I'm going to hit my sub menu little black triangle down there in the bottom. Select my ellipse mask and just trying to draw my oval around here. I'm going to go ahead and feather my mask. So I'm going to come up to the top menu bar and go to mask and then mask outline and feather. I'm going to drop my width down here to probably about a 30. I want it to be on the outside and I want this to be curved. And hit OK there. Um, I'm going to reposition this a little bit. We can kind of see with our mask marquee here that I'm really close to that bottom edge there. Again, we don't want to make our mask come below that because we'll get that kind of flat tire look. So right below my masking tool, I'm going to grab my mask transform tool. 
And then just bring this up just a smidge. Bring our sides in as well. A lot of empty space there. So now I can come up to Object. I'm going to go to Clip Mask, Create from Mask. Just like so. So now I can kind of place him around this area here. So the next thing I want to do is I now want to bring in my background. So I'm then going to go up to File and Import. And find our background scene here. There we go. I'm going to reduce this in size as well. And I'm just going to kind of place it over my dog bone here. So now, right now, if you looking at this, you can see that we only see our background. So what I actually want to do is I'm going to come over here to the, my, my background two layer, and I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to drag it down. There we go, so I can see my dog bone here. So the next thing I want to do is I kind of want to get rid of a lot of this background here. If we would send the file out, out as is, um, we're going to have all this empty space here where the laser is trying to engrave at. So with this layer here, now that it's below my bone, I can then come again come over to my erasing tool and I can just start getting rid of a lot of that background there. Now I do want to keep a, a little bit of the image on the outside here. Basically, again, we just want to make sure that we're going to fill up the entire bone. We're not going to have any empty spaces there. Uh, even though we did increase this bone size a little bit higher than our actual bone, uh, again, that's just a precaution. And really, I just want a general basic shape here. Closer up in this top left hand corner. All right, something like that there should work. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to grab this background layer again, and then instead of it being below my bone, I'm going to move it up above the bone layer. And there we go, there. I'm going to go next, I'm going to add in a little bit of a text here. So I'm going to grab my texting tool over on the left hand side toolbar. I'm going to come down here and we're just going to call this buddy. Now, right now, my text is black and I actually want to change that color. So I'm going to highlight it here and then over on my color toolbar on the right hand side, I'm just going to select white. Oh, find a little bit of a fancier font here. Uh, there we 
go, and then we'll just increase this up. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of make up some dates here. Uh, 0, 03. Click on the wrong part there. Dash. Dash. Let's say 16. Hit enter. 2. 08, let's say 29, 21. And scale that up a little bit. Now if I select my text tool here again, and we can see we have our object marquee still around our dates, I can come up to the top and just make sure that that's all centered. I'm highlighted here. There we go. My marquee to see a little bit easier here. Now, when I'm working with something like this, I like to do a little bit of a drop shadow um, behind my text and behind my image, just to add in a little separation. As we can see here, it's kind of blending in with our background. So I'm going to come over to the left-hand side toolbar. I'm going to grab my shadow tool. We're going to start with our text here. So I'm just draw a line up. And with this, what I'm actually going to do, typically I would use like a white background if I was just doing an image. But because I'm trying to add in some separation between the text and the image and the background, I'm going to switch that color from white to black. We're going to adjust this. We want it to be linear. Put it on the outside. And I can see that. I can bring that down just a little bit more. And we can see how it's really making that text stand out a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and increase my feather slightly on it. And I'm going to leave my transparency the same. Uh, then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the exact same thing to the name here. And grab and drag this up. Lineared outside. And I'll bring this down just like so. Increase our feather a little bit more on that. Then, last but not least, our image over here. Down just a little bit. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually drop the color out of all this. So I'm going to select my background two, which is uh, my forest scene here. I'm going to come up to adjust and I'm going to desaturate. Do the same thing with my cutout here. Desaturate. Now what I want to do next is I actually want to kind of blend these in a little bit better. So I'm going to come up to my image, or actually adjust, and I'm going to use my tone curve here. It's a little bit easier for us to see. Move this over. Darken this up just a smidge here. Hit OK. And then I'm going to select my background two. And I'm also going to adjust that with my tone curve. And I'm just going to lighten this one up just a little bit there. There we go. All right. Looking good there. So now what I want to do is I'm going to turn my background back on, and I'm going to turn my dog bone off here. So I'm left kind of with this shape here. We're going to go ahead and export out our file. And we're going to use a Windows BMP dog bone, and we're going to place it right on our desktop here. 
I'm going to say flatten, just meaning that all these layers here are all going to get condensed down to one layer. And then I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. We're going to go ahead and open up our Corel Photo Grave, or no, I'm sorry, just Photo Grave, not Corel. And Photo Grave is a real easy, simple program. We're just really going to work left to right here. So I'm going to open up my image, find our dog bone here. I'm going to select my material. We want black granite, which is my default. I'm already in my interactive mode. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change my machine DPI to match my image DPI. And go ahead and hit enter there. So we've got our simulate over here on the right hand side. I'm going to select the O over on the left hand side to show me my, my original here. And I'm going to use my gamma down here just to kind of lighten everything up as a whole, which is this yellow triangle here. So I'm going to take it up from a 411, take it up to maybe around a 576 there. That's looking pretty good. Start seeing a lot more detail stand out. We're going to go ahead and hit our final process here. And I'm going to save my image. We want it to be an engraved image. We're going to hit OK. I'm going to put it right on our desktop. We can see at the end of our file name, we have our ENGR. Uh, we're going to leave it as a photograph supported image and hit save. All right. So the next thing that I want to do is I'm actually going to open up my Corel Draw program. And I'm going to bring in this dog bone template. And I'm going to make a vector DXF file out of this. This is going to just help me make sure that everything's lined up properly on my actual material. So let's open up Corel Draw. I'm going to do a new document. Uh, size doesn't really matter, but I've already got it preset to 16 by 8. I'm going to hit OK. Go up to File and Import. And bring in our template. All right. I'm going to go ahead and make sure my ratio is locked here. And we're going to go ahead and increase the size to 16.125. I'm then going to come up here to Trace Bitmap. I'm just going to do a quick trace on it. I'm going to grab this and move out of my way here. So this is our traced image here. And delete our original one. Bring this back over to my work area. I'm going to go ahead and select my properties tab over my right hand side. And I'm going to add in a hairline outline. And I'm going to drop the fill out. Now we kind of see this box around the outside of my bone. So I'm going to come over to where my cropping tool is. I'm going to hit my sub menu and select my virtual segment delete. I can just get rid of that box. And there we go there. Control G, make sure that's all grouped together. Then I'm going to go ahead and go up to File and Export. And we're going to be sending this out, I'll call this a bone outline, as a DXF file. Export. Uh, we want an AutoCAD export version as an AutoCAD R14. Uh, we're going to be sending this out in inches. Uh, there's no text, but we always send text out as curves. Uh, BMP and color or unfilled does not matter and hit OK. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize that and we're going to open up our RD Works program. I'm going to first start with coming up to File and Import and we're going to bring in our photograph here. I'm 
engravable image right here. All right. I'm then going to go ahead and come up to File and Import again, and I'm going to bring in my outline. It's not the one I'm looking for. Make sure this got exported out correctly. Ah, it went into my documents. Lesson learned there. Always make sure you pay attention to where you're exporting your files out to. There we go. So inside of RD Works, I've actually got a centered up tool. Um, it's right up top here. If I select that, I can make sure that my images are falling right in the middle. So you can see here our outline running down and around. And again, we, we left a little bit of extra out here on purpose. We just want to make sure that we are engraving the entire bone. We're not leaving any empty spots there. So with my bone selected, my layer right, and move this out. Looks like my image is broken up just a little bit. Make sure that's grouped together. Make sure we don't. There we go. Some overlapping lines. So I'm going to center this back up like so. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and start setting my speed and power settings. So I'm going to come over to my BMP. I'm going to run it at a 28 speed, 21 power, with an interval of a 150 DPI. Then I'm going to move over to my outline. So I'm going to turn my output to yes. I want a speed of one. And then I'm going to change my power down to zero. What I'm hoping to do with this is to have the machine run the cut layer with no power and trace around my dog bone. That way it can ensure that I'm centered up and everything is going to lay out properly. So back on my main screen here, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my output for my scan. And I'm going to, sure, that's still set for one and zero. I'm going to come up to config and system settings. Uh, I've got my origin set for center. And we're going to go ahead and download. All right, so again, that scan and grave layer is off and my cut is on. So let's go ahead and jump over to our machine and get into focus here. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do, again, I've got my dog bone in here. I'm going to move my laser head over to roughly my center spot. Hit my ZU button to bring this in. Check our focus in the middle. Look good there. Check my other corners. A little high there. There we go. To our front. Good there, back, a little low there. Do a double check. All right. The next thing I'm going to do now that I'm in focus is I'm going to kind of use my red dot here and I'm going to come along this base here just to make sure that I'm straight. We're a little off. 
that looks better. Then going to come up to my center mark here. I'm going to hit my origin, and then I can actually frame out. Is it a little high? Let's shift it down just a little bit. So again, what I've done is I've, I've have the outline set to a cut and I've got my power set to zero. So what I can actually do is hit start and actually watch it trace around. Um, for this purpose here, I'm gonna go ahead and override my limiters, my door limiter, just so we can see this a little bit easier and go ahead and hit start. So we're looking pretty good. We're staying just onto the outside of that bone there. Right on the edge at the top. It's like we're coming to the inside there. Again, this dog bone is just kind of a template, just kind of us to kind of keep it, keep it in general range. It's not going to be an absolute on my, my actual bone here. Let me try that one more time. a little bit better now. And a little bit more on the edge here. And again, that's one reason too we left a little bit about, you know, a sixteenth of an inch there on both sides of our image when we were erasing our background. All right, I to remove my tape here. Shut my lid and I'm going to jump back over to my computer. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my cut layer and turn back on my scan layer. I'm going to read download. All right, and we'll jump back over to our machine and hit start. Now this is going to take uh, roughly around 12 to 15 minutes to run. Um, so if there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer them as we go along. We wait for this. Looks like I have a couple questions. Yeah, I'm actually going to be taking the dog bone out as soon as we're done engraving um, and being able to show everybody the, the finished product there. So again, uh, that's going to take about, about 12, 15 minutes. Uh, so if anybody has any questions, uh, please feel free. You can type it in the chat box here and I'll try to answer everybody's question in real time. Just so everybody knows, I am using our standard uh, two-inch lens with this. 
And again, uh, this, these dog bones do come in a variety of different sizes and are available for purchase on our AP Laser University or our AP Laser store. Um, having somebody ask me uh, why I'm using uh, RD Works instead of Lightburn. Um, with Lightburn, it's really easy when you're doing it with photos to uh, accidentally click on a, a negative image to do it. Um, as far as an operating program, though, it will work just fine. Um, I, my, personally, I just find RD Works a little bit more of a, a stable operating platform. Um, someone's asking, how long does it take to learn this complicated software? Um, everybody has a different learning speed. Um, there's going to be a learning curve to it, of course. Um, but that's one of the nice things with AP Laser. Um, we are there to assist you. Um, so not only do you get one-on-one -on -one training with um, a technician, um, we are also there to help support you if you, after training, if you ever have any questions, any concerns, uh, you can always give us a call. Our technician is going to be more than happy to help point you in the right direction and, and help get you learning. Uh, we also have a ton of learning resources like these workshops here that are, are specifically job focused. Um, we've got our AP Laser University site as well that's got a ton of uh, tutorial videos there. If any of you have uh, any questions as well um, over this process or any of the other processes we have in our videos, um, please feel free to reach out to our technical support team um, at 844-364-8211. They'll be more than happy to help you out again. Um, there's someone asking, uh, the lens cleaning requirements more period with granite versus wood? Yeah, granite's not going to give off as much dust as, say, wood. It's not going to give off any kind of smoke or any kind of residue like that. Um, I do believe our current maintenance schedule is, is suggesting to clean the lens on a weekly basis. Um, I do always highly recommend sticking with that. Um, especially when you're doing portraits and things like that, you want to make sure that everything is, is started off clean. Um, you're not going to have any errors or, or issues with your lens. Now, I'm having someone asking about our videos and, and what we do afterwards. Uh, yes, we do post these videos on our YouTube channel. Um, we are also in the process of taking them and posting them in, in our AP Laser University site under the um, setting up for certain jobs. So they'll be a little bit more categorized there as well. Um, our goal is to try to make at least one video a week uh, live and then uh, post it the following week. Um, um, yes, I'm having someone ask what type of laser am I using and can you do this type of things with the smaller lasers? Absolutely. Um, I am using a 4836 right now. Um, I, I do recommend um, with portraits and things like that, if you have one of the smaller machines, the 1812 does an amazing job with portraits. Um, I believe our last video that I think is possibly getting posted yesterday or, or coming here real soon, we did do a portrait on an 1812. Um, very similar to this process here where we had a actual round piece of slate. And again, we kind of described in that video uh, that the, the beam size out of the 1812 is a lot finer than my larger machines. So it gives you a nice, crisp, fine dot size. And again, does portraits beautifully. Um, is the same basic, yep, somebody's asking, is it the same basic process for using rock, slate, etc.? Uh, yes, um, Photograve, again, is a, is a very easy program. Um, you, as you can see, you just pretty much select the materials you're walking through. Slate's not on there, um, but I do typically run it with the granite setting. Um, I've had a couple customers point out, say they've gotten good results using the marble setting because slate is a softer material. But as far as photo paint goes, yes, the process is all universal and all the same. And it looks like we're coming up to about a halfway mark on our uh, piece here. So again, please keep the questions coming. Um, if you're joining us for the first time, I did see a few new people here. Um, again, we always post these videos uh, the following week on our YouTube channel. So make sure to uh, subscribe to that so you get alerts whenever new videos hit. Um, we are going to be practicing a little bit more, trying to open this up for more viewers and more people. Um, and as long as this kind of works out well on our YouTube platform here, uh, you basically won't need any kind of invitation. You'll be able to come right to our YouTube channel and watch us live every single week.
Uh, yeah, someone's asking, um, am I using a, a blower? Yes, my blower is running. Um, I do not have my exhaust going just because, again, it's, it's granted, it's not giving off any kind of smoke or residue or anything like that. Um, and my current one that I have in here is a, is a BOFO or like a HEPA filter, so it's really quite loud. So just so everybody can hear me a little bit better, I've got that turned off at the moment. Um, but good point. Please always make sure that you, you know, ventilate and your air assist is running. <laughs> oh, I missed a question here. Um, are there leasing options? Uh, Yes, uh, I believe we do work with a couple of leasing uh, companies. Um, I unfortunately am not too involved in the sales process, um, but please feel free to reach out to one of our excellent sales uh, associates. They'll be more than happy to help you out with financing, answer any kind of those sales related questions. Um, Someone asking, uh, what is the speed and power again and what power laser tube? So I am working with a 100 watt laser tube. Uh, my current speed is a 28 and my minimum max power is set at a 21. Um, someone asking if I'm going to go over about paint. Um, yes, actually, I do have a bottle of paint here. Um, we're going to be using a little bit of a, acrylic enable um, just to kind of highlight the granite a little bit more, makes it kind of stand out pop. Um, and I will go over that process as soon as we're done with this. Uh, someone else asking if the Photograve is part of the software package. Um, and are we getting RD Works and Corel, but not sure about the rest? Uh, yes, if you are buying our, our design package, um, that would include Photograve and uh, our Corel suite. Um, even if you're buying one of our smaller machines, you do always have the option to upgrade uh, to that design package as well. Just want to take a minute too and thank everybody for showing up today. Uh, I think this is probably one of our largest groups we've had yet with this. Um, excellent response, and I hope you guys are all enjoying these videos we're making. I know I'm enjoying making them for you. And I'm always up for suggestions, so if there's something specific you're looking for, um, please uh, you know, shoot me an email. Um, you can reach me at Jason, J-A-S-O-N, at aplaser.com. That is laser with a Z. Um, I'll be more than happy to point you in a video that's already created or take your suggestions on, on future projects. Um, someone asking uh, what the process is for cleaning this up. There actually is no, no cleanup process whatsoever with the granite here. Um, we're basically going to just let it finish up here um, and then we can add in a little bit of a highlight uh, paint again with that. Um, it's not absolute necessary. Um, it just helps make the, the image pop out a little bit more. All right, sounds like we're all finished up here. So let's go get our dog bone here and see what we have. All right, so this here is our finished product here. Uh, like I said, we got some really great detail going on here. Our names and everything are kind of standing out. Uh, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna add in that highlight paint there. So again, what I got this, uh, it's an acrylic uh, enamel. I got this at Walmart for right around $1.50. And I'm just gonna, a couple little drops there. Take my paper towel here.
All right, we got our paint off. Go ahead and take a look at this now. And there we go. Like I said, you can see the difference between when we first engraved it and brought it out. How uh, we, you know, we could see everything, but it was a little bit dull there. Um, now that we've added in that little bit of highlight paint, it really pops and stands out. Um, I do apologize about the paint. I am not a painter by any means necessary. Um, do, do, do. And I have someone else asking, uh, yes, uh, these are available at our AP Laser store. Uh, we do have a variety of sizes in there. Um, I believe they're starting off at like 10 inches, uh, 14 inches, and this one here, which is a 16 inch. Uh, again, the template that I use for this is also available on our AP Laser University site uh, for download. And we'll leave this up just a few more minutes here. See so if anybody else has any questions for us over this process. All right. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate the compliment there. I try hard for you guys. I promise you that. <laughs> um, well, if nobody has any more questions or anything like that, um, you know, we'll go ahead and jump off here. Again, if you do have any questions over this process, any of our processes in our video, please, please, please give our tech support line a call at 844-364-8211. Um, until next time, uh, you guys have a great Friday, and we'll see you later. Bye, everybody.